Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 18th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Old Minds and New Wine, and our scripture is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9. One day, the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? Jesus replied, Do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But some day the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wineskins so that both are preserved. The older one gets, the more one looks back on the chapters that were instead of looking ahead to the chapters yet to be written. Perhaps too much. It's difficult to look ahead when your mind is full of the past. Yet, there's something to be said for meditating on what has happened, if the future is going to make any sense. For instance, a pastor's unquestioned task is always to preach God's word in God's timing so that the true wisdom of God can bless and direct God's people. So, a pastor must face what's ahead while keeping the past in mind. To let the future have sovereign reign is to fall prey to some of yesterday's mistakes, spilling the new wine of tomorrow before it has time to mature. To let the past reign, especially in an old mind, is to turn your back on the promise of all things new. We make choices, many without thinking. We are conditioned so, and life demands choices and changes. And in the wisdom that unfolds with time, we know everything of the past was not entirely evil or entirely good, as well as we know everything new will one day be in the past. We live... We choose, we learn. If our minds are the wineskins of which Jesus taught, then the possibilities of the wine of yesterday or tomorrow are what goes in. Jesus said you can't put the new wine of tomorrow's experience into old skins, an old man's mind perhaps. The common reasoning is that the fermenting of the new wine creates growth action that will expand and burst the old stretch-to-the-limit skins. As it is with old minds and new wines, so it is with the church and her ebb and flow of serving Christ's kingdom. The more churches dwell on the past, lamenting the loss of those quote-unquote good old days, the less fit we become for the new wine of Christ's promise, Behold, I make all things new. And when God is moving in the hearts of young people to stretch and accept His growth to expand the kingdom, we do well to make room for that which is coming, or risk the judgment of Pharisee-like hardened skins ready for bursting. I know of only one remedy for that, and Apostle Paul made it simple for us old folks. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewed minds new wineskins for what's coming, made possible by the kind of faith that presents body, mind, and soul to Christ, the surrendered life. For you today, old wine is best in taste, but it is strongest and meant to be savored and sipped. New wine is best in promise, meant to be expanding and changing. There's room for both. No, There's necessity of both in the kingdom of God. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.